firstly, the Eurogroup has now committed to a restrictive fiscal stance for 2024. And that means as we phase out energy support measures, they need to go into lower levels of borrowing and not other forms of spending or tax reduction. Last year, the euro area deficit was above 3%. Uh, for this year, we expect it to be below 3%, leading to debt levels on average of around 90% of national income. And then the second thing we need to do is find new ways of financing the huge investments that are to come that are not entirely out of the European taxpayer. And that involves how we engage with the private sector. So there are two big steps that we need to take. There's a big debate as to how you get back to having some form of fiscal rules. Uh, this is something that you, the EU Council looked at. MEPs are now also wrangling over the detail. It looks as though everybody wants some wriggle room. The just in case, the caveats, how do we invest for the future? Sure. What do you think the outcome should look like to ensure we have the money to invest, but also get back to budget discipline? So the ministers of the European Union uh, agreed a general approach, in other words, the broad overview of fiscal rules and budget rules for the European Union just before Christmas. And look, I think you make uh, an important point. With all of the challenges and crises of recent years, I think it is important that we do get the balance right between being able to invest in the things we now know to be so important, but also get borrow borrowing down in a credible and careful way. Uh, the rules that we have agreed, I believe, get the balance right. Their impact will really only be felt, however, in the years to come. And in, for 2024 and 2025, the actions that finance ministers take as these rules are being implemented will be the bridge to seeing these rules being credibly rolled out across the European Union. And I'm confident we'll be able to do that. Let me ask you about capital market union. This is something you'll be debating as well on a panel later on today. We've interviewed just about every European banking CEO and the mood is that there's appetite for M&A, particularly because we've now seen the best of the, the NIMS, the, the net interest margin expansion story. Sure. Capital markets union isn't here. I mean, it's almost a lost decade in terms of achieving that. What needs to change to ensure there is the right framework where banks can consolidate and make a much stronger banking system in Europe? So I'd uh, respectfully offer a different view, which is that capital markets union has been happening, but it's been happening in a gradual way. But I think it is fair to say we're not quite uh, near the kind of ambitious vision of what a broad capital markets union could look like. This has been brought into focus by the budget pressures now that governments are facing everywhere. Uh, within the Eurogroup, we're aiming by March to reach agreement on a political statement regarding the policy steps we'll ask the next Commission of the European Union to act upon to deepen capital markets. But while we're doing that, there is progress being made in relation to things like common accounting frameworks and in relation to finding ways in which uh, information regarding capital markets can be, can be shared more effectively across the European Union. But we've more to do and we're going to do our best to do that now in the coming months. Are you disappointed to hear, though, that banking CEOs can't conduct M&A because they don't have the right framework? Well, I think they can conduct mergers and acquisitions, but they probably can't conduct them in the frictionless way in which banking, the banking sector and leading banks will want to do. And that is very understandable in one way. The European Union has made huge progress. We have a single market that's getting deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper, but we're neither a federal union nor a single country. And there will always be some different national characteristics within a political construct like the European Union. But we can do more. It's not just about integration. It's not just about consolidation. It's about how we can deepen our way to invest in a better future. And we're working on that at the moment. I want to bring up fiscal policy because we were talking to a lot of ECB policymakers. Uh, Klaus Knott was one of them who was saying that fiscal policy has not been working constructively with monetary policy over the past 12 months. Effectively, it's making central bankers' jobs much more difficult as they've had inflation to contend with. Mm -hmm. The message here on the mountain is that, look, we may not be done with fighting inflation. And that's been really disappointing for a lot of market participants. Just sketch out for us the challenges that you see around fiscal spending but ensuring that you don't undermine monetary policy? So uh, our work with inflation is ongoing. Uh, it's really welcome to see how it is falling. It's falling in line with expectations uh, and with what we believe would happen. But we still have a way to go to get to the target that we have for the European Union. In relation to fiscal policy, uh, borrowing is falling. Uh, debt levels as a share of national income are stable. 
And uh, I think the fact that inflation has been falling uh, shows that fiscal policy, I don't think, has played a big role in preventing it falling uh, over the last 18 months. But critically, in the next 12 to 18 months, we need to do two things. Firstly, the very big energy supports that were in place to cushion households, to cushion businesses from the effect of rising inflation. We need to wind them back and withdraw them as the price of energy comes down. And then the second thing we need to do is we need to try and act in, a more, in an even more coordinated way in the European Union. Reducing borrowing across every country is, of course, it's always complex with the political and social challenges we face. But we have a better chance of pulling it off in the majority of countries if all countries feel we're going in the right direction and in the same direction. And that's what the Eurogroup is working on at the moment.